Hey there friends, welcome back to Flossy. I know I haven't made a YouTube video in so long, but this one is going to be a very quick, fast paced um, blast through tooth identification, uh, just the minimum details that you need to know for passing the tooth identification test. So I'm a first year dental student that's about to go into second year in less than a month, so so excited for that. And um, yeah, so we have this exam at the end of September, I think, and um, this video will just be like a condensation of the main points from my tooth morphology series in case people cannot be bothered to watch through all that again and I will just be outlining them the just a couple of points so you can tell a central incisor from a lateral incisor, upper from lower, left from right, just the bare minimum details that you know you would need to be asking yourself when you're picking up a tooth and trying to identify it. Okay so uh, let's get on with the video. So if we begin with incisors, these are very, very easy to talk about. Um, the uppers are generally have a spade-shaped appearance, whereas the lowers tend to have a chisel-shaped appearance. Um, the upper central incisor has a sharp 90 degree angle on the mesial side of the uh, labial surface, the front surface, um, whereas the distal side has a is more curved. And that repeats on the lateral upper lateral incisor. However, um, it's slightly more rounded on both sides so that's one way you can tell the difference between upper central and upper lateral you don't have the same like it's a little bit more harsher and defined on the uppers and then on the cent on the next ones they're slightly more rounded um, they're also shorter <laughs> I'm demonstrating myself now um, so upper laterals are, are shorter in crown height than um, upper centrals and they are narrower around the gingival margin and they have longer thinner roots that's a really obvious one whereas upper central incisors short stubby roots so you can see that very clearly on the diagrams there that i've um, included on the uh, revision pack for this video so um we've talked about left and right it's not necessary to learn the difference between left and right for the mandibular incisors um that's for the king's identification tests at the moment at least and um, they're not testing us on the difference between lower central and lower lateral incisors Okay, perfect. So we've done incisors in less than a minute. So now we can move on to the canines. So canines are the longest teeth in the mouth. They have a single cusp tip. So that's one thing you can look for to think, oh, is this a canine or not? Um, they do have a cingulum. So they um, go down at the back and there's a bit of a bump. Um, the lower inside, uh, sorry, the lower canines, they are much more curved. You can really distinctly see this, whereas the upper canines kind of not not as much not as much it's not as curved and the reason for that is because when the lower model occludes with the upper model the bite has to be like that so the um upper canine has to kind of push on top sit on top of the lower canine and push it back that's how it fits so that explains the reason it's so curved then determining left and right so this is a really annoying fact that you have to try and remember so uh, the distal cusp slope is longer for the uppers whereas um, in the lowers the mesial cusp slope is longer so if you just look at a picture of how they fit together it should make sense. Let me just also point out if I haven't said it already that the cusp tip is slightly sharper on the uppers whereas it's a little bit more worn, it's not as distinctive on the lowers. And that's canines done so we can move on to the premolars now. Uh, premolars from the front they do look a bit like canines. We had like a mock test on identifying a premolar or a canine and a lot of people got them confused but what you need to look out for is the fact that um, they don't have a cingulum they have a proper cusp at the back so that that should be really obvious whereas the canines obviously don't so I'll show footage of this study model so you can clearly see the premolars against the canine um, see how the canine like slopes down whereas the premolars have that cusp at the back because the premolars are bicuspids generally um, I'll come to that in a minute so in the upper premolars, they have cusps of a similar height. Please note I said similar. So the palatal cusp is lower, it's smaller than the cusp at the front, the labial cusp um, or buckle. I can't remember if it's the labial or buckle actually. Whereas in the lowers, again, it has a lower lingual inner cusp. However, it's a lot smaller. So that's one thing you can use to tell the difference between upper and lower premolars. But I think the easiest way to go about it is to generally look at it from the side and see how curved the tooth actually is. And um, because again, it will be pushed in by the upper model. Another easy thing you can look at is the fact that the upper first premolars in most people 
70% apparently, are double rooted. If you see a double rooted premolar, you know it must be an upper and you know it must be the first one. However, another indication of whether or not it's a first, upper first or upper second is the canine fossa. So there's this depressional concave surface where the crown meets the root on the mesial side of the first premolar because it's sitting next to a canine, so that makes sense. Then if you want to tell the difference between lower first and lower second, uh, the lower first premolar has just one cusp at the back, whereas the second premolar tends to have two or it just has messed up ridges. Okay, so now let's move on to the molars. So these are the proper beasts of the human dentition, but they're actually really easy to recognize. So if we take the upper molars, uh, they all have three roots um, and then lowers have two roots. So I think three, two, I don't know. You can make like a gang sign out of that or something. I know Nima came up with one in his um, lecture. And then which fissure shape, which pattern can you see? So if you see the eight shaped fissure pattern and you see four cusps, then you know, yeah, that's definitely an upper. And um, the biggest cusp of all, the mesial palatal one, mesial palatal, remember that, um, is directly under the palatal root. So hopefully you can see in the diagram right now, you've got a really long palatal root and it's either side of two buccal roots. So if you know where the long root that's in the middle on its own, then you know where the mesial palatal cusp is because it's directly underneath it. Um, and it's the biggest one. And then it's got a little distal palatal cusp, um, which is like squeezed on. And as you go along the arch, so the first molar, the second molar, the third molar, the second one will have a smaller, a squished version of the distal palatal cusp. And the third molar, it'll have disappeared. So that gets squished and disappears by the end, that distal palatal cusp, which is next to the big one, the mesial palatal cusp. Um, side note, you can also get cusp of carabelli, which is on the mesial palatal side. Um, so if you know what that is, great. Um, I actually have one on my left side and I don't have one on my right side, which is a bit odd. I don't know why. I'm just weird like that. So um, yeah, uh, not everybody has them on every si on, on every upper first molar. Um, n some people don't have them at all, so that's just a non-functional ex extra cusp that some people have. That some people have, sorry I'm mumbling. Um, okay, and then I haven't talked about the lowers at all really. The lower molars have a cross-shaped fissure pattern, um, although the first one has it has a really unusual, really unique occlusal surface. So it has the four cusps and then it has the little extra one squeezed on. So that's really distinctive, you would know that. And then the second, lower second molar has the cross and the four uh, cusps and they all look like kind of roughly the same height. Uh, they aren't. I'll go and I'll talk about that in a minute um, And then the third Molar the wisdom tooth is like a more squished version of the second So it's very, very similar if you're telling second and third apart then look at the roots. So the third The wisdom tooth will probably have fused roots um, and also that same for the upper wisdom tooth. So upper third molars all have fused roots um, yeah, generally, pretty much. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it's right at the back of the mouth, so it's just, just about sque squished in. Last thing I wanted to say, I want to wrap this up because I want it to be under, like, 10 minutes. You know, revise all of tooth morphology in 10 minutes. If you're distinguishing between left and right for lower second molars, then you'll notice that the mesial cusps are... Also, this is true for the, uh, for the lower first. The mesial cusps are slightly taller than the distal cusps. I've thrown on a couple of extra important additional facts there. So I've said buckle side of lowers is more curved, so the uppers fit over them. Um, therefore, to match this, the palatal side of the uppers is curved. Uh, and you can see that on their diagrams there. Um, and therefore, the inner side is straighter. I hope I haven't missed anything. I think that's pretty much all of it. It's very difficult to say all of this with such speed. And because we're in your mind, you're kind of you know all the rules about each tooth and it's just picking which, which are the easier features to look for. 
um, and there's a couple of them and usually I like to know a couple of extra features just to kind of reassure myself yeah this definitely is that too. There might be a couple of other features that I've not mentioned but they're on the revision pack hopefully. Um, this is a condensed version of all the notes. I do recommend going to the Gordon Museum. I've been there at 8 in the morning and stayed there till 11. I had the room all to myself where I could just watch the videos. Made all my notes, um, peace and quiet was great. So yeah, if you haven't done that, I do recommend it. Get all of the facts yourself first and then if you want a quick refresher on the go, maybe on the tube you're watching this, um, then yeah, this I hope, I hope this helps people. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that was pretty much everything um, that I wanted to say. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, useful, if you liked it. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.